Hi, I'm India Bardalo, and I'm lead motion capture specialist at Lux Machina. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about real-time camera tracking in Unreal and how we utilize that for virtual production. So a, a bit about Lux Machina. We develop and engineer cutting-edge technical video solutions, specializing in virtual production, in-camera visual effects, created screen controls, and technical displays. Like most companies working with tech, it was built by a bunch of nerds wanting to do cool stuff. And we're mostly comprised of broadcast engineers, system architects, software developers, creative producers, and technical specialists. And this is what I fall under. As a technical specialist, my role is to consult, design, and operate tracking solutions. And although I'm working more in virtual production now, my background is actually full body performance capture for films and games. So, what have we used camera tracking for? We first developed our pipeline for The Mandalorian. It was a perfect volume for reflections, which, you know, the, if you've seen The Mandalorian, it's based on The Mandalorian's reflections with a suit, which brings realism to it. But we've also worked on The House of Dragons. And this was at the Warner Brothers stage, V stage in London. And we're using a Vicon Vantage system. And as you can see here, it's not the best mocap friendly environment. You've got lots of occlusion, you've got water, you've got pyrotechnics. But we're tracking both cameras and the body of the dragon. We've also done feature films on this stage. So this was a great one, Barbie. We did a lot of the Barbie world shots as well as the car processing. And we also do short form. So advertising and music videos and this was a really great music video because the main the main object in here is a very very reflective caravan so it would have been near impossible to be able to shoot this within a green screen or a blue screen but also this is a really great production so this is at the ARRI stage and we work very closely with creative technology in ARRI to offer both engine and camera tracking. And during this shoot, we were actually using seven different Unreal environments and moving through them simultaneously, all within one take. So processing power was key for this. We've also done live events. So this is a snapshot from League of Legends 2020, where we have used camera tracking to virtually extend the environment and for augmented reality. And more recently, we worked on Valorant and League of Legends 2024 using the same technology. So this video behind us is um, Masters of the Air. And this again was shot at Warner Brothers stage in London. Uh, and if you haven't seen it, it follows the story of World War II fighter pilots. And again, it's another production which you, is heavily involved with using reflections and lighting. So with this production, we were not only tracking the cameras, but also tracking the, camera, the cameras within the, within the plane, but also the plane itself. And by tracking the plane itself, we were able to extend the wings and the propellers of the plane virtually into Unreal. Again, this is another Vicon Vantage system. So why do we use camera tracking? So it's always been a great tool. So virtual cameras have always been a great tool for game development, whether that's for lining up shots, for in-game cinematics, or for allowing the director to really get immersed within the virtual experience. So why do we use it? As you've seen from the past productions, we use it for virtual set extensions and backgrounds. We use it for extended reality, and we also use it for augmented reality. So when we're tracking the camera, we want to find the exact position and orientation of that camera in 3D space. And that allows us to be able to, to integrate that real world footage within the virtual environment and we're using virtual assets. So when we're tracking a camera, why do we track it? We track it because we want to understand what the camera can see. And this is the camera frustum. And the camera frustum is the virtual viewing point of inner volume of what the camera can see. And it's essentially like a truncated pyramid or like a cone shape that represents the area in 3D space the camera that, that is visible to the camera. Thank you. Um, so with this, why do we track a frustum? A lot of it is down to performance. 
So say you're in a, a LED volume and you've got quite a heavy virtual environment. It may take a considerable amount of processing power to be able to render that out to higher resolutions. So this is where frustum culling comes into effect. By tracking the frustum, we are then able to optimize real-time rendering by only rendering out what the camera can see, so the inner frustum, because anything outside of the camera's field of view is not contributing to the final image. So as you can see here, it's not just about rendering out to higher resolution. What if your production wants more flexibility with what you're shooting? So with this, it's a great example is Simulcam. We're able to track a green card as a frustum. And that enables the actor to be able to be immersed in the environment, react to things in the environment. But at the same time, you've got lighting, you've got reflections, but you can do more in post to be able to change that. So how do we track it? You see the big spiky thing that's attached to the camera. That's the camera that's tracking Sputnik, what we call, which is an active marker crown. And we attach that to the camera. And we designed and developed that based on the difficulties that we see when you're merging motion capture with traditional film. So you've got the rules of motion capture, which will minimize occlusion. Your cameras are working by line of sight. If they can't see the markers, they can't track it. But also minimize reflections, because any added reflections in there can cause issues with data and noise. When you're on a film set, all you have is occlusion, you have set builds, you have shiny objects because traditional lighting uses reflective objects to reflect the light. So we've designed this to be able to be visible by as many cameras as possible under difficult circumstances. So what we do is we calibrate the nodal point of the camera lens in relation to where the crown, tracking crown is sitting. And we do that in Vicon software. Similar to how you would calibrate the motion capture cameras, we do it with a wand wave. And we're collecting wand frames across the lens of the camera. And by doing that, the camera is able to take in certain information like the field of view, the aspect ratio, the parallax points, you've got the entrance pupil threshold, radial distortion, so you've got your lens distortion. I can do that in 10 to 15 minutes per lens. So say if I'm on a film set and I've got a heavy lens package, I know that I can do that quickly. With other tracking systems, so like an inside-out tracking system, that may take me hours per lens. We also build our own servers, and they're optimized for running Unreal in these circumstances. So if you'd like to know any more about our technical specifications for these, just come and grab us afterwards. So we're going to jump into the demo. And I've got an Unreal scene, and I'm tracking a virtual camera. I want you to be able to pick it up, touch it, move it around without feeling like you're going to drop it. So can I get a volunteer? Anyone? Yeah, go. Let's go. Yeah, come grab it. Okay. Yeah, have a, have a play with it, move it around. So really, it may look difficult. Not difficult, but it may look odd because what you're seeing is from the viewpoint of where the nodal point is set. So when you're working in virtual production, what you want to be looking at is what the camera can see, not what you're seeing in Frustum or outside of Frustum, because we're only really rendering the inside of that to a higher resolution. So some of the reasons that I like Vicon, um, I mean, there's so many ways that you can track a camera. It, it totally depends on what the purpose of that is and what production you're working on. So there are strengths and, and weaknesses with every tracking solution, but the reason I use Vicon is for latency. So it minimizes latency through object tracker mode. You're pushing grayscale data through and sending it down a low latency port. So I know that when I'm on a, an LED volume and I've got many different moving parts, I know that I have minimal delay coming from camera to system, from system then to Unreal. But then obviously Unreal is running the environment and pushing that onto end display. So we want to be able to limit latency as much as possible. I also like the flexibility, as I spoke about earlier, the ease of being able to calibrate camera lenses really quickly with other, other tracking solutions. This may take a lot longer. I know if I have a, a director that wants to jump from a 
Thimblecam or jump from a handheld to a Technocrane and I need to re-rig and de-rig and recalibrate, it's done really quickly. I also like the fact that we're working in sub-millimeter accuracy and sub-millimeter accuracy equates to sub-pixel accuracy on LED, um, which is another reason that I love using Vicon. Um, but yeah, thanks guys for listening to my talk about virtual reduction. And if you want to know anything more or ask any questions, just come and grab me.